So I'm excited to present this paper for two reasons, as you can see uh, on, this <clears throat> on the title, theory and evidence. So I really uh, kind of look forward to your comment on this paper. Not only that, right now we are really actively revising this paper. Every week there is a new contents of it. So even if you actually see this uh, presentation two weeks ago, hope, like uh, someone, still there's a new thing actually we added uh, for the, over that two weeks. So let's start the presentation. What's the motivation? So we actually really think that the importance of human capital for firms have been significantly increased for the last couple of decades. However, the evidence about the role of financial information in the job market seems to be a little bit sparse. So in this uh, <clears throat> paper, we try to ask how really job seekers use financial information in the process of job search. And if they use it, what is the implication of job seekers using financial information in the job search for some equilibrium outcome? such as form heterogeneity and waste distribution. So the first question to us is whether even does this financial information matter for job seekers? We actually take a look at anecdotal evidence first. And if you take a look at it, some of the articles on the website, especially the first one, the title itself, why job seekers should read annual report. So it looks like the answer to whether it matter for job seekers seems to be uh, a little bit yes. And also, if we just uh, try to summarize some of these articles, is that job seekers use or recommended to use financial information to run about job prospects, such as cost and benefit of working for a specific company for decision making. We're going to elaborate it uh, in a minute. So uh, first, in the empirical part, we try to test this hypothesis, job seeker using financial information to learn about job prospects for decision making. We try to kind of divide this uh, hypothesis into three different pieces, decision relevance and job prospect relevance of financial information and also job seekers financial information acquisition. So by exploiting a novel database that matches job search, posting and interview data with financial information, we first try to document any abnormal job search behavior around earnings announcement. Here job search means if you think about indeed some job board, or uh, blind, some professional job seekers uh, network website, you can go there, you actually type the company name, then you can see the company salary, job posting, or interview questions, etc. And then we actually move on to whether then when if job seekers react to this earnings announcement um, event, whether that information, financial information, really relevant for their decision making, especially job prospect of those jobs. And for doing, in order to test that, we also take a look at future job growth or career development relative to current financial information. Finally, based on this uh, two exercise, we also take a look at it, if that is the case, whether in the important stages of job search, job seekers acquire financial information or search for financial information, we try to <clears throat> proxy this um, construct as uh, Edgar searches. So these uh, empirical reserves still require kind of theory to interpret. The reason is that without any search frictions or search costs, it is really difficult to understand why certain job seekers make certain job search activities. That is why we are going to introduce just search friction and search cost from the prior literature and then build a search theoretic model to understand job seekers behavior at the same time, also what implication of job seekers seeking financial information for equilibrium outcome from heterogeneity and waste distribution. Finally, before getting into any data or um, reserve, we want to uh, quickly go over literature review. So there are a few a directly related paper, including Brown and Matusha and Dehan's paper and our a paper extend those paper in important dimensions, such as we try to examine job prospect and job search relevant financial information. We believe that we are the first to uh, con <clears throat> conduct this exercise. And also we then discuss what's the implication of that for equilibrium outcome, as we just mentioned. Now it's time to go to the um, evidence first. So we are going to use uh, multiple data sets, but right now I just want to emphasizing 
the left-hand side job search and financial information search data. As I mentioned, we are going to use this Indeed and Blind proprietary data. You can imagine just like a Google search, there is a very job specific a search bar, and then you actually type company name, then you can see job posting or <clears throat> job search relevant information about the company. We actually try to measure that as a job search uh, activity. And also we use financial information search data and from the SEC uh, logo file, probably you are more familiar with it. And the other two data sets are job posting data from Burning Glass Technology and also job interview data from Glassdoor. Overall, we need these four data set to keep track of job seekers activities in different stages of job search. And this is essential for studying our research question. Now let's take a look at figure one or the first uh, empirical result. These <clears throat> figures are very similar to Bieber 1968, but we kind of extended his um, argument in the job market. So the, the left-hand side variable, in this case, abnormal job search, workers searching for these companies, kind of posting or uh, salary or interview question. And as you can see, around earnings announcement, there's a spike of abnormal job search. And the spike is most salient for firms with earnings growth. If you look at the right-hand side panel C, without any earnings growth, the spike is pretty much muted. And we try to understand this as on the job search for future job. The reason is that when you actually take a look at job postings around earnings announcement, we didn't see any spike or around earnings announcement job posting so that this event can be viewed as through the media or you know, through friends or the specifically look at the financial information, they learn that this company now is growing and therefore they want to get more information about this company, especially salary, future job, or interview questions, and that will be prepared for them to you know, go to the next job. Now then we wanna think about if that is really true, whether this financial information contains any future job prospect in order to test that we are using this regression specification. The summary score is a financial performance summary score. That's a right-hand side variable and the left-hand side variable y YJT can be job growth or career path. We measure job growth as the number of job posting in the future and career path as number of senior position job posting in the future. And the universe observation is company and quarter. And you're going to also use job intense search intensity later in the slide. So let's look at the uh, regression uh, reserve, column one, two, three, four, represent future job posting and also future senior position job posting one month ahead and also four months ahead. And if you uh, focus on column two and four, or all the columns are positive, meaning that we find financial performance is predictive of future job posting and also senior job posting. So finally, given that uh, financial information is decision and also <clears throat> job prospect relevance, we want to take a look at that in the important job search stages like an application and interview, whether job seekers search for financial information. So our right-hand side right over here is now job posting or interview, left-hand side financial information search. We use a Edgar search as a proxy, but in the later uh, RoboSense test, we also use Google search to measure financial information search activities. And in this uh, regression, the unit of observation is form, quarter, and county. So since now we are also using some geographical variation and also time variation, let's quickly take a look at one example, Peking Corporation of America. It's a <clears throat> manufacturing company of packaging materials and left top corner job posting per capita right top corner figure, interviews per capita, and then bottom figure, financial information searches per capita. As you can see, some uh, colors and the, the variation, you can see common variation across these three figures, meaning that in the county firm um, in which there are more posting, more interviews, we also see more financial information searches. Now bring this into the um, regression setting and especially focus on the column three. 
as you can see, positive coefficient 0 0.0156, meaning that more job posting also leads to more financial information uh, searches. And I want to emphasize that we use firm month year fixed effect, meaning that we really fully take out any financial performance effect. We really take a look at across county what happened when there is more job posting and therefore whether we see more financial information source in that county. And if I translate this um, coefficient into some economic magnitude, doubling job posting leads to 0.56 additional searches per year. And given that Edgar search is just one part of the information, financial information search, we believe this is economically significant. And as I mentioned already, this result is robust to also Google trend data. And when you take a look at interview, the result is the same, more interview, more financial information searches, and doubly interview our quest <clears throat> interviews leads to 0.91 additional searches per year. So we kind of tested uh, our kind of empirical hypothesis in a regression setting. Now we want to actually interpret what that means under the economic framework. So we try to bring two important um, assumptions from the literature. One is direct search and the other one is financial information acquisition cost. So direct search means uh, in the real life, we are not able to really apply all the companies in the, over, in the world so that some, some uh, job seekers try to pay attention to a certain set of the companies based on their information set. And that is uh, part of the uh, search friction and that can be used as direct search. And also at the same time, after they to decide which company they want to focus on, they also have to put some effort during the interview or even application process. And we can view that as financial information acquisition cost or simply uh, search cost uh, component. And finally, in this model, also we think about ways, although it will be offered at the end, if you think about how our job market work, I didn't actually get the wage offer at the beginning, I only got after I got an offer. But if you think about in that way, then wage, although it's just one number, empirically, it can also incorporate some job prospect. In that sense, it is somewhat related to our prior um, exercises. Okay, then if uh, using this assumption, if I formulate the uh, workers problem and also firms problem because of sake of time, if I just focus on workers problem and that is more important um, from our perspective, you know, the V, the left-hand side is a value function. And then this maximization function is really which um, sector they want to direct their attention to. And then B is uh, unemployment benefit. And within this uh, the <clears throat> maximization function, the, the top, let's see, there are three components, match rate and employment contract value and cost of search effort. In other words, if the workers go to the high performing sector, they are less likely to be matched because everyone wants to work with the high sector. But one of the reasons why everyone wants to work with a high sector is because at least if they are matched, the employment contract value of working for high sector, high performing firm is higher. However, because of this uh, fierce competition to get that position, also there's a high uh, search cost. And that's exactly the trade-off we're using uh, by bringing uh, some of the assumption. And I just slightly explained, therefore proposition one, two, and three. If I just reiterate one more time, job seekers therefore uh, intuitively apply to high productivity firm expecting higher value of employment contract, however, lower probability to be higher and job seekers also intensify their search effort as the job market is more crowded. By the way, when we actually get to this equilibrium, we only uh, numerically solve this equilibrium because based on the prior paper, Hoffman and Shai, getting the general uh, <clears throat> inference from the model is uh, pretty complicated so that we actually using a reasonable parameter value and then uh, get this, uh, the numerical analysis we jerk. And if I just tell you these two figures, the pink line uh, represent low type firm, red line represent a high type firm. The left-hand side figure is a cumulative distribution function. So it's more tilted outward red line, meaning that the high type firm actually really offer high value contract. However, then if we move on to the next figure, S and alpha, especially alpha, 
maturate, that red bar is smaller, meaning that it's, the workers are less likely to be met with a high type firm if they actually apply to the high type firm. And also at the same time, as the search uh, effort cost, that is actually higher bar, red bar for a high type firm, meaning that also workers have to put more effort to be matched. So we try to examine this uh, proposition uh, formally in this regression format. So now we are using summary score as independent and job search intensity at the left-hand side variable. And we can see this positive relationship, meaning that high performing firms also get more job search intensity or job search intention. By the way, in all these three regressions, we controlled for job posting, meaning that this is relative to job posting, we see more attention. This is consistent with uh, proposition one and two. Finally, we also uh, test proposition three, job seekers intensify search effort by using uh, Herfinder index in the labor market. In other words, there are smaller number of employer, but large number of applicants, in that case, high HHI. And in high HHI column two, the coefficient is larger than column one meaning that the association between interview and financial information search is stronger as job market becomes more and more competitive for job seekers. Finally, after we actually kind of testing a few propositions from the model, we want to really fully use this model to get some uh, understanding of the equilibrium outcome as the um, job seeker using financial information. In other words, we actually conduct some competitive statistics. This cannot be immediately done in the empirical setting, but through the lens of the theory, we really want to get a little bit more from the, from the data or from the theory. And it says right now we actually work more on that, but one understanding based on some numerical value is that as the search cost increases, the gap, wage gap, and also employment gap between the high sector and low sector is decreasing. So one interpretation is that if the search cost is increasing, now high sector is less attractive because too competitive, too costly to compete there. Therefore, now employment gap is decreasing. In other words, less job seekers go to those um, high performing sector. At the same time, we actually assume, this is probably a little bit related to our assumption, we actually assume free entry condition. In that sense, if there, this uh, high performing sector is less attractive to the job seekers, then also firms are less likely to be matched with job seekers so that they cannot really offer high wages because their profit is really the combination of how much they can get after they pay the wage and also how likely they can get their workers. If the match rate is go down and because of the free entry condition or zero profit condition, they're not able to share a lot of wages with workers. So overall, based on these findings, we want to suggest that job seekers really use financial information in the process of job search to learn about job prospect and make important job market decision. And these whole phenomenon also determines form heterogeneity and wage distribution in the equilibrium. We wanna do more as a future work here. Some of them is different part of the annual report more actually look at the uh, job prospect, different aspect, and also conduct some counterfactual analysis with collaboration. But we would like to hear more from you and that we want to work on this project to improve our understanding of the role of financial information in the job market. Thank you for your time.